Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we're gonna learn how to create the navigation bar uh, that we have over here inside Webflow. Now before we obviously build any website, we need to have the design of the website ready. So here I'm in Figma, and this is basically the entire landing page that we're gonna be uh, building, as I mentioned in the previous video. Now I'm gonna share this file with you you can check it out the link will be down in the description so you can just open that up in figma and you can get started and you can view all the assets and fonts and basically the entire layout so for the purpose of this course i'm going to be using roboto as the font but you can definitely use any other font that you like since I'm on Windows, I'm using Roboto, but if you are on a Mac, you could probably use San Francisco, or you can definitely use any font you like. I'm gonna show you how all that works also in Webflow. All right, so here I'm in Webflow, and this is how it's gonna look when you start off. Now, I just have this personal project that I created, but since Webflow allows me to use two projects under the free account, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new project by clicking new project over here, and it's gonna give me a couple of templates that I can use, uh, a couple of paid templates as well. So just to get started really quick, so it's pretty cool. But for this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and start off with a blank side, and we're gonna call this downloads page, all right? And click on create project. All right, so here we are in Webflow, and what you see is called as the Webflow Designer. Now, before we get started, there's another thing that I wanted to mention is I highly recommend that you open up Webflow right now, create an account, and do things along with me. It's gonna be much easier for you to understand how it works rather than just watching me do it, uh, because only when you do it hands-on will you get the hang of how Webflow works. You're gonna figure out what are the mistakes that you did. You're gonna learn how to debug and troubleshoot your own problems. So that's how you end up learning Webflow. Webflow. All right, so let's get started. Now, Webflow has a lot of features. It has a ton of features. So I'm gonna explain one by one as and when I use that feature or use that component or part of Webflow. All right, so I'm gonna take it slowly and easily and hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is on the left-hand side, we've got all the features of Webflow to add elements, to add pages, your CMS, uh, images, assets, and so many other stuff. So let's go slow. So I'm gonna start off by clicking here, which is gonna add in elements. Now we've ha we have a lot of elements over here. We've got things like section, container, grid, div block, link block, heading, um, image, video. There are so many things. It's highly recommended that we use these assets to build things in Webflow because this is the actually the only way you want to do it. So the first thing is we want to build a navigation bar. So as you can see in the components section, we have a navigation bar. So I'm going to just drag on that and come over here and then just drop it over here. And as you can see, this is what we get. It looks pretty cool, right? Now on the right hand side, you have all the properties that you can play around with to customize the look of this the way you want. It's pretty simple. Now if you take a look at the original one, it kind of looks a little different. The navigation bar over here looks a little bit different than the navigation bar over here. So we're gonna go ahead and customize this a little bit. Now I'm actually gonna go and open up the, the actual hosted design plus code downloads page so we can quickly reference both of this at the same time. Cool, so this is the design plus code downloads website and uh, this is what we have. So right at the top we have courses, downloads, pricing, sign in and you know we have this get pro access button. Um, so let's go ahead and then just start creating this, all right? So as you can see, we have home, about, and contact, but we want it to be different. We want it to be courses, downloads, pricing, sign-in, and get pro access. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna click over here, and as you can see, we have this thing called as a nav link. So let me show you how this actually is structured. So right on top, you have the body, which is the parent element, which is controls everything else. And inside the body, we have a navbar element, all right? So this whole thing is the navbar element. So we have the body, and inside that, we have the navbar, which is a child of the body. The body is considered as the parent, and the navbar is considered as the child. And in the navbar, we have another element called as the container. Now this container has a certain property, which I will explain about a little bit later. And inside the container, we have a link block, which is called as the brand. So link block, is basically any element that can be clicked on with your mouse cursor. 
Anything that can be clicked on, anything that is a link is called as a link block. And then here we have a nav menu, which is a div block. So for those of you who don't know what div block is, div block is basically like an invisible container that can hold up many other elements. So it's holding up three navigation links. We have navigation link one, two, and three. And then we have a menu button, which is hidden. You can't see it because this is actually the hamburger menu. So if I go to another breakpoint such as tablet, and what is a breakpoint? Breakpoint is basically a certain width at which the whole look of the interface changes. So we're gonna do all that later in on the course, but for quickly to demonstrate what I'm talking about, when I click on tablet, you can see that all those elements, all these three texts just got invisible, and then we have this menu button, which is basically the hamburger menu. So if I wanna show you how this actually works, I can click on here, which is the toggle preview button, and as you can see, the cursor changes to this hand icon, which means that I can click on it, and if I come here to the tablet view, I can click over here, and that's gonna bring out the drop down that we see over here, which is pretty cool, which is exactly how it should work. So that's how breakpoints work. So let's go ahead and quickly rename this for now. So we've got courses, pricing, and sign in. All right, so we've got courses, all right, just double click, and then we've got pricing, and then double click, and we've got sign in, all right, that looks perfect. Now, if I come over here, you can see that this is basically the inspector panel or the style panel that I would call, and these are basically all the properties that I can change to make this look much different. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna add in something called as a class. So for those of you who don't know what a class is, class is basically like a collection of properties given to a single element. So for example, if I go ahead and then just given a class, let's say we're gonna call it nav navigation links, all right? That's the name of the class. You always wanna give a class to all your elements. I'm gonna click on enter, and as you can see, it's now called navigation links. So let's go ahead and start styling this the way we want. So here in Figma, I'm gonna come over here, and as you can see, we have a couple of properties over here. So the font is Roboto, it's got a 20 pixel font size, and it's got a fill of F2, F2, F2. So let's quickly do that. So to see it a bit better, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this navigation bar, and I'm gonna come down here to the image and gradient section, which is basically the backgrounds, and I'm gonna change this to black, so you know, or kind of like a dark gray, so we can see what's actually happening. So I'm gonna click over here in this, and I'm gonna go ahead and change the font to Roboto. Now, there are a couple of fonts that are inbuilt inside Webflow, uh, as you can see over here, and Roboto doesn't seem to be one of the fonts. So before we install the fonts, let me just go ahead and set up all the settings. So here, we're gonna set the weight to bold. Uh, we're gonna set the color to F2, F2, F2. Um, the font size is going to be 20. So now let's go ahead and install the fonts that we want. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go over here and go to your project settings. And here you have a lot of settings that you can go ahead and edit. For now, we just need to focus on the fonts. So we're gonna click on fonts, okay? So there are a couple of Google fonts that you can get. So um, if, you, if I come over here, you can see that we have a lot of fonts that are Google fonts. So I'm just gonna search for Roboto. Okay, and as you can see, we've got a lot of variants that we can choose from. So we've got um, regular, uh, let's go for 500, we want bolds, we've got 700, 900, and 300 as well. Um, we don't, we're not gonna be using any italic font, so we can just ignore that, and then click on add font, all right? And now we've added all the Roboto fonts. Now, if you have a custom font, which is not a part of Google fonts, you can definitely just go ahead, pick up your font files, and then just upload them over here, or if you have an Adobe account and you use Adobe fonts, you can quickly go ahead and uh, input the Adobe fonts API token for this project. I'm gonna leave a link down below in the description about how you can integrate your Adobe fonts. So definitely do check that out and you should be good to go. So if I go back to the designer and I come back over here to the navigation links and let's choose font, let's click on Roboto. And as you can see, we have Roboto right over there and I'm gonna click on, just click on it and it's gonna apply that. And you can see we've got all the light, normal, medium, uh, bold and black uh, font weights for Roboto. Great, now uh, the other ones are pricing and sign in. I'm not gonna add in downloads, so I'm just gonna go say pricing and sign in. So the quickest way to apply the same characteristics are the styles of this to this is by adding the same class. All right, so as you can see, the class name is navigation links. So if I select this navigation link and then apply the same navigation link 
class, it's going to basically apply the same properties and the exact same properties. And there we go. That looks pretty cool and looks pretty awesome, right? That looks amazing. Now, the next thing we want to do is we're going to add in the logo. So here in the brand section or this brand link block, we can basically add in a logo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and import all the assets. Now, if you want to import your assets, you can go ahead and import it. But I've already actually exported all the assets for you. So you can check it out in the project file uh, that's linked down below in the description. And uh, basically, if, you want, if you're building your own website, what you want to do is you can select the logo. All right. And come down to the export section. And what I would recommend doing is export it at 2x. All right. Export it at 2x because if your website is going to be viewed on a Mac or a screen with a retina display, which is usually all the time, then you don't want it to pixelate. So you want to export it at double the size. And then here you can choose whichever format you want, um, SVG, PNG or PDF, but I usually stick to P PNG if I know that I'm not going to scale the image or the asset too much and then just go ahead and export it. Now I've already exported all my assets, so I'm going to go and click on upload and just import everything over here. All right. So I import all the assets. Now, if I want to import an image element, what I would want to do is create inside this um, brand link block. I want to go ahead and import in a image component or an image element. So I'm just going to take that and I'm going to drag that inside. And as you can see, it sits right over here and I can go ahead and choose an image. So I can choose this logo and I can click on H I D P I, which is high density pixels per inch, which basically means that it's going to display it at high resolution, even on retina displays, which have double the pixels. So basically what you want to do is just click on this and it's going to uh, fix it out for you. Now, as you can see, it's given it a height of width of 60 pixels and the height is auto, which means it's automatically going to get the height based on the width. And here in this case, we can see that this is just 30 pixels wide and 30 pixels tall. So I'm going to go and set the width of this to 30 pixels. And I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, close this up. So we have our logo over here, which is pretty cool. Now, if I go here and just go to toggle preview, if I hover over, you can see that I can click here um, and I can navigate wherever I want. Now to decide where you want to navigate is once you have the um, link block selected, which is basically the brand element in here in the brand settings, you can actually give a URL to where this will navigate to. So if you want this to go to a separate website or you want to open it up in a new tab, you can click on that. And uh, so let's just go ahead and I'm going to copy this link address and I'm going to paste that right over here and then I'm click on open a new tab or you can link it up to a separate page of your website or a separate section of your website, or even you can open up at the email or even a phone number. So a lot of things that you can do for now, we're going to stick to this. I'm going to press control V and then choose open in new tab. And that should pretty much do it. Great. So the next thing you want to do is you want to get this button. All right. So it's pretty simple. So there is a button component that we are going to use. So the button element should be somewhere over here or um, the quickest way to search for it is press command E on your keyboard. And when you press command, e, you're going to get this kind of a search bar and then just type in button and click on enter and it's going to import it. Now, obviously it's imported it in the wrong place. So as you can see, this is outside. So what we want to do is we want to put this inside the navigation menu. All right. So it sits over here. So the text is get pro access. I'm just gonna click on that and then type in get pro access. Perfect. Now we can actually go ahead and give this button the same class. So if I type in navigation links, you can see it's going to take in all the properties of that that we had, but you want to customize it a little bit more. All right. Um, the only thing I wanted is the color. So which is 54 CFF3. I'm going to copy that, come over here, and then I'm going to go ahead and then just paste it right over there. Now, this is the problem they're going to face. Now, as soon as I change the color, it's going to change the color for everything else because they are all using the same class. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control Z that. Okay. And here, instead of navigation links, I'm going to give it a new class and I'm going to call it um, button. All right. Now, I will have to manually add in all the settings. So I'm going to go set the font, set that to Roboto. We're going to set it to bold. I'll size set to 20 and also we're going to change the color of this to the color that we copied. Great. 
The next thing you want to do is you want to add in that rounding. So if I go here and come down to the radius settings, um, I can just increase this to whatever I want. So probably something like 20 would be a good number. Maybe 20 is too much, so probably 10, right? Yeah, and uh, that looks uh, pretty good. So we're just building up slowly one by one. We don't want to mess around too much or it's, things are going to get complicated. You start from scratch, start slowly, and then you tweak it up according to your liking. Great. Awesome. Now, as you can see over here, all these elements, the logo and all these texts are sitting right beside each other, which is different than over here. So the first thing you want to do is we're going to take the container, all right, and Take a look and understand how this is built. So as I mentioned, we have element number one, we have element number two, and then we have element number three. Now for element number three, which is the menu, which is the hamburger menu, let's just ignore that. For now, let's just focus on these two. So in order to put them together, we're gonna to do something to the container. Now this is the container, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the layout display. So basically we have six different types of layouts, which is block elements, um, which is flex, We've got grid, we have got inline block, we've got inline, and then we've got none. So basically none hides up everything. So we don't want that. We wanna choose flex in this case. So why am I using flex? So flex is basically a type of layout that helps you to evenly space out elements, you know, within a container or within a big parent element. So right now it looks pretty messed up, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fix this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on horizontal, which is obviously selected because we want all the elements to be arranged in a horizontal fashion and not vertical, which would be on top of each other. So if I go on vertical, it's gonna go one below the other. Click on horizontal. The next is to align it to the center so that you can see all the elements are aligned in the center, but that's not happening to the button because the button is actually in a different parent. All right, so it's the button is there in the nav menu parent, but we are assigning properties to the container. So it's gonna make the brand in the center and the nav menu in the center and the menu button in the center. So to fix that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the nav menu and then I'm gonna make that into a flex. Okay, and now that's going to go ahead and mix things up. So the quick way to fix that is to set that to center and now you can see it is in the center. Okay. So now we've done this, let's understand how we can simplify this. So as you can see, we have this container over here, and then we have the brand, nav menu, and the button. Now we don't actually need the container because we can add all the properties to the navigation bar itself. So I'm gonna go select this brand, just move it outside, the navigation menu outside, and the menu button also outside. Okay, just select the container and hit delete. So now as you can see, everything is moving towards the edge of the screen. So if I go here, you can see it's pushing everything towards the edge of the screen. Great. So we wanna come back to the nav, nav bar and we wanna set that to flex and we wanna set it to align center and now it's like this. Now there's another thing that we wanna do. We can go ahead and instead of justify left, which means everything is moving towards the left, if I set it to center, it's gonna look like this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose space between, which means it's gonna space out things but that still doesn't solve the issue. We want it to be right beside each other. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the navigation menu, all right? And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set the width of this to 80%, all right? Click on 80 and then hit percent. Why am I choosing 80 is because we have five elements and this nav menu has four elements, all right? Courses, pricing, sign in and get pro access button. So for all this, I want it to take up 80% space which is 100 divided by five into four, all right? Click on enter. So now this is how it's gonna look, all right? Now this looks pretty cool, right? I mean, everything is evenly spaced out as we wanted, which is pretty fine. I mean, this is exactly what we wanted, but it's spacing out too much. I mean, here it's pretty close and here it's spacing out too much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a certain width for the nav bar. I'm gonna tell the nav bar, I want you to take a width of 800 pixels bam all right that looks pretty good enough but the problem is it's towards the left side we want it to be in the center so one cool thing in webflow is in this spacing section when you add a certain width or a fixed size you can actually click on this button which says center element horizontally requires a fixed width now we have given it a fixed width of 800 pixels so if i click on this it's going to push it right in to the dead center and now that looks 
pretty okay. That looks pretty fine. But we can still see that if I select one of this navigation link, we have this unnecessary margin, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and then just go ahead and set that to zero, all right? I'm gonna set the same thing over here to zero as well. And now everything comes into the center. So to space them out, we can actually select the nav menu and instead of justify left, we can choose distribute from start to end and that's gonna push things towards the complete right and to the complete left. And now our navigation is finally complete. Now, as you can see here, here we have some background and then here it's a transparent background. There isn't this gray section. So to quickly do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this body element, all right, in the navigation over here. And you can also select it over here, all right? And I'm gonna come down into the backgrounds and instead of white, I'm going to go ahead and choose an image, which is going to be this, all right? and. As you can see, it looks kind of weird. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go and click on this, which is going to not tile it. So I'm gonna remove the tile and I'm gonna set this to a cover, which is gonna take the space of the entire thing. And I'm gonna set it to center, our alignment, all right? And now I can select the nav bar and I can go to the color and then just reduce down the opacity so it looks something like this, all right? And now if I go here, you can see that it's pretty good. We have this background and we have this, which is looking pretty good. Now, yes, this is a little bit down, um, but this is right at the top, but we're gonna fix that a little bit later. But for now, let's just build up everything that we have over the page and then start tweaking things and making them perfect. So in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and build this hero section and add in this slight interaction because it's pretty simple. So I will see you guys in the next video.